Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Today we are talking about my Laser Master 3. Last purchase, September 10th, 2022. September, October, November, December, January, February. Yeah, so I've had this thing like over five months now, so we'll call this a six-month review. So it's a little less than that, but... You know, six months sounds good, whatever. I don't think anything is going to change between now and, uh, you know, the rest of this month. I've got, I've used it almost every day since I had it when it was working. So, you know, I, I think uh, considering what you're going to find out in this episode, I, I think I'm well qualified to review this machine. Uh, I'm going to open this with a question, of course, for everyone is that whoever out there, do you have a machine? If you have it, a lot of people won't, of course, because they're watching this video. But if you have one, uh, did it work right out of the box? And has it worked now for four to six months without any trouble? Uh, I kind of want to get a, an idea of who is out there and what machines have been dependable for everybody. And uh, especially if you have a LaserMaster 3, did it work right out of the box? And have you ever had to call customer service for anything? And then let's get on with the, the review. I'm going to go outside and uh, kind of talk about it with the machine in view. And uh, let's see what, what has been my journey with my LaserMaster 3. Kind of a cold, but uh, nice day out here in California been a cold winter and uh, that's going to come into play here when I review this Laser Master 3. Now I bought the Laser Master 3 with my own money. I bought the extension kit. I bought the Z-axis. Uh, I bought the air assist. So this will be uh, uh, coming from something I purchased. Now Also have the handy dandy cartridge here. I should probably put that on. I keep that inside. Uh, when it's on cold, when it's cold days, it's probably going to rain tonight. Uh, so I put the tarp on it. But it does not really love the cold. Anything below, say, 45 degrees. It doesn't seem to love it. Uh, now, we're not talking freezing or anything. So I brought some notes here and we are going to go over the good and the bad and the ugly about the Laser Master 3 from an actual customer. And then I actually have a 20 watt that will be here, that's already here actually, I just gotta put it together and then I'm gonna do some comparisons and reasons why you may want to keep one or the other. But as for today, the Laser Master 3, uh, I, as I said, I bought this. My channel was new and nobody was going to be sending me any lasers. And I had initially bought the Jinmitsu Jinsoku LC40, which is a 5.5 watt diode. And I realized I needed more power. That was a great machine. I really, really loved it. And uh, so I, I really liked this, the design of it, which is very similar to here with the Ortur Laser Master 3. Now, I had first bought an Atom Stack uh, 10 watt laser. And it had the, you know, the, the body of it was basically parts you would buy off the shelves. It wasn't a dedicated laser frame. And I thought, well, I, after having the uh, Jinsoku, I really wanted to have that dedicated frame because I just thought it was better. Well, that may not actually be the case because if you go back to the Ortur Laser Master 2, it was uh, pretty much off the shelf, but it was very reliable and everybody seemed to really love it. So is the Laser Master 3, is it an upgrade uh, other than the higher power, which is 10 watts? So it's something to think about. I don't think anything on it that I'm going to review today is really going to change within the next you know, few months or whatever. So I think this is a good review after uh, something I use pretty much every day when it's working right, and uh, that's it. You know, uh, at, first of all, I will just say something about Ortur in general. I like Ortur. 
I like Ortur. I, I think they're a, a good company. The uh, customer service when I have needed something has been right on it. They have helped out quite a bit. I'm very happy with the customer service. Uh, so I'm going to go over some of the good things. Uh, it's consistent for what it does. Like, you know, I mostly am doing leather. You can look at my leather wallets or whatever. Uh, and I show you how to make those. It is super consistent with that. I've got it dialed in. I get no smoke on the edges. It is just beautiful. So that I'm liking. Uh, the support, as I said, the price is reasonable for what you get. And you have a lot of accessories and a lot of very good accessories that you can buy to upgrade your machine. Uh, I'm pretty happy with almost all of the accessories. I love this air assist that they came out with. I highly recommend it for anybody who wants an air assist, regardless of what kind you have. Uh, the Z axis is very nice to have, very easy to use. I like that I can still just take off the cartridge anytime I want here, but then I have the Z axis I can use, but I can still move this up and down using just the regular, uh, the regular way. I, I think that's really cool. I like that. Um, here, I'll plug this in. I like the look of it. I think it's pretty, pretty cool looking, even though you can't really tell much because I have this tape here. You know, I use this tape. It keeps everything exactly where it's supposed to be. Nothing moves on this thing, which can be a detriment, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But considering that I do all my work outside, because something to think about, and I mentioned before, if you have an enclosure, I mean, if you have an extension, you can't just buy an enclosure off the shelf, right? You're gonna have to make your own enclosure. And since I'm outside, I'm not really uh, thinking about that too much, but it's just something to think about. If you're gonna have this inside, how are you going to get an enclosure if you get the extension? And the extension is very nice to have. It really has, it, you know, maybe you don't use more than the 400 by 400 that often but it does allow you to put things on, take things off. Just the working is a lot easier. And also sometimes I do make things that are, that are larger or if I have a larger piece of wood or a larger piece of paper, it's just nice to have. And I think their accessories are reasonable for the most part uh, and pretty good quality. I have not tried out their new Chuck Rotary but the uh, Louisiana hobby guy has, and it looks like it's, you know, one of the best ever made. And uh, I sincerely would like to try that one out. As I said, even though maybe I wouldn't buy another Ortur Laser Master 3, just because I don't think it is probably the best uh, for the price or the best period on the market right now. I think Ortur as a company is really good, and I'd like to see what they come out with. If they come out with a 20 watt, uh, cartridge. I, I may actually get it. Uh, I will just have to see what I think about it when it comes out. And that might as well take us to what I don't like about the Laser Master 3. Uh, if some of you have watched my original videos on the Laser Master 3, you realize I've had quite a bit of trouble. When it came in, it wasn't working correctly. I had to get a new motherboard. And, uh, you know, it's never fun when you get something and you try it for the first time and it doesn't work. The belts just, I tighten them up, but it does, just doesn't seem to love the cold. Like I said, uh, I have had trouble getting the belts to be the correct tension. Like I, I will fix it. The belts will be fine. It will start great. And then I get this dreaded message. So when it warms up, it will work fine. But while it's cold, and it's probably like 48 degrees out right now, but it was a bit cooler this morning, around 40 or so. And it just, you know, the belts are pretty, pretty tight. But now if I want to tighten the belts again, then I have to take off all the tape and then readjust everything and then put it all back. And it's, uh, in just my opinion, I don't like the, the, the belt system on this, and I've, I, I just haven't had a good time with it. The limit switches, so they just, they don't really have limit switches in the way that you would think them normally. They just have a stop, and somehow internally with the software, it makes it stop. It works, 
but it's just not working great. Like, like I said, it, this issue I'm having with the belts probably wouldn't exist if it had limit switches because it doesn't need to do this bounce off that it needs to do. So your belts really have to be perfectly tight to make it work correctly. That's just the way that it seems to me. And so, yeah, I also had an issue where one of the Allen bolts was loose, so it wasn't working correctly there. I was, <laughs> one of my axes wasn't working correctly. So I had to tear it apart and, and uh, tighten that back up. Cable management could definitely use some work. And the main thing that, of course, most people know when they talk about a Laser Master 3 is the air assist. So you, you can see I built my own. Um, you can see my video on how I did that. Some other people have done 3D printed ones. That's really cool. This works really well. So if you take the normal air assist and you put it through their hole here, your lens is going to get smoke on it. It's gonna get dirty. It creates some sort of vortex that uh, every time you use it, you will have a dirty lens. So it was a terrible design. I don't know why or what happened there, but that's really bad. So I, I sh made my own air assist. And now if you, like I said, a few other people have also done that. Um, everybody seems to have the same sorts of results. The downside is that when, if you want to take it off, it's kind of difficult. Now I've got it to where I can push it up and get it away from the material if I want to, so that if I have material that's maybe might, you know, come up or something, it's not going to hit onto this. But if you have this permanently here, you're not gonna be able to do that. So I think that's kind of a detriment. Having it be able to go through the top is the best, but it just doesn't work right. So what can you do? So, I, you know, overall, I think the quality control just wasn't what it needed to be for their flagship project, you know, their flag, flagship product. So with so many really, really good uh, lasers out on the market right now, I just think you can do better than the Laser Master 3 right now. But I am going to keep my eye on Ortur. And I'm, like I said, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have come out. I'd love to work with them in the future. I think they're a good company. I think their uh, customer service is, you know, as good as anything I've worked with in an in industry. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention my power supply also went out and I had to get another one of those. They actually sent it to me. They sent me a beefier one. Again, a customer service took care of me, but in the end, I would like to have a laser I don't need the customer service for, <laughs> you know? So if you're out there or tour, I, I do love you. I just looking forward to you making a product, product that really fits my needs better. Um, I personally probably need a 20 watt just for what I do, except for the leather. Now leather is really, like I said, works really, really well in this machine. So this may be the last time I use it for a while. So I just kind of wanted to show it to you, but I've made some beautiful things here on this, on the Laser Master 3. And uh, if I don't end up keeping it for a while, maybe I'll get it to a, a better, better person. But right now we're gonna try the new 20 watt and see how it goes. So not sure if I left anything out, but if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. I'll get, I'll get back to you, of course, and let you know what else I think. All right, see you in the next one.